We all know that vegetating plants need less light than flowering plants, but just how much less does it need? Well, a grow I did recently was able to shed some light on this question, and the results are sort of insane, although when you break it down, it does make sense. So let's take a look at the grow first. This is my first real attempt at maintaining a perpetual grow in a 3 by 2 feet, 2 in 1 grow tent. And for anyone that has a similar type of tent, you know that growing anything here other than seedlings is really hard to do. Even at the larger sizes, the small compartment of these 2 in 1s are always around 1 feet wide, which never made any sense to me, because there's basically no grow light that can easily fit in the space. But when I got these grow light bars that could magnetically snap onto the center tray, I figured even though it was only outputting 40 watts, that in a space this small, that should be okay. And holy crap, did the vegetative plant thrive in this small space. Anything I threw in here grew so fast that I first took out one and then two bars, lowering the total output to just 20 watts. Even then, the plants were outpacing the flowering compartment so much that I had to keep cutting back new growth. And this made me realize just how big of a difference the lighting requirements are for a plant in veg compared to in flower. Because not only does vegging plants have a smaller light requirement, but due to the plant's small size, that requirement is then divided even further. So for example, let's say I have a 2x2 two two feet grow space running 100 watts of light. And this is a really common setup that's great for one flowering plant, which typically you can easily fill the entire space so that almost none of the grow light is wasted. Now in the same space, let's take a look at this vegetating plant. At this size, I can easily concurrently grow like 10 of these meaning that each plant of this size is only utilizing 10% of the total grow light, or 10 watts. So if I shrunk the space, like I did here, placed in only one plant, it's no wonder why 20 watts worked so well. This also reminds me of a number of questions I get from new growers, wondering what went wrong with their flowering stage when their vegetative stage went just fine. And a lot of times, it just has to do with the lack of lighting. Sure, you can probably get some okay vegetative growth, placing a plant next to a window or with some really weak light setups. But once it comes time to switch to the flowering stage, you'll need 10 times that amount of lighting to produce dense buds. And without it, you'll get small flowers with very loose bud development. So yeah, if you want to pack your vegging plants together, place the light lower and dim it down to 30 or 50%, you can easily save a ton of electricity while still getting the same output, just because small vegging plants really don't need that much light. And this is something I do regularly now, especially when I start my grows in a smaller space like a humidity dome with the bar lights. And that's it. 